right, guys, here we are. Black Boy Marina. About to get this party started. Let's go. How's it going, guys? We got a Black Point today. Just trying to make it happen. Haven't fished in a while. I mean, I've been been having trailer problems, so I swapped the whole. We, you know, me and my me and my mechanic, we swapped the whole axle, leaf springs, hubs, and everything. You know, so we're just out here now. We got a full tank and gas. We can do some trolling. You know, no no rig ballyhoo today. Just all plastics, all artificial. You know, sea witches, planers, uh, diving plugs, that kind of thing. So see what we can do, man. We gotta get out there. Gotta sweat for it. You know, and uh, we have about a 25 pound chump block. So then after that, we'll hit the patches and see what's going on down there. Solo trip. Get some meat, baby. Let's go. Good karma. Real nice day out, guys. Rolling out here, found that nice blue water. Hooked back around, trolling north. See what we could find. Look at these dolphins. Whole lot of them. All right, guys, we trolled for two hours. Didn't get much, I didn't get anything really. Just all those dolphins, just cruising in and out of those, um, you know, the green water and the blue water. A lot of the flyers are in close, but the blue water is out deep. Passed by uh, one of these wrecks in 150, and I saw one of these guys uh, hooked up. Like they were using live bait, and he got hooked up pretty quick. So, got some frigate bits over there. I'm just gonna try to pick up some live bait here and do some drifting. See if it can, uh, you know, put a, put a, live bait up top and see what i put a little bait down in the bottom and see if we could uh, get hooked up on the drift and then the the third part of this fishing trip is going to be anchored up over there on the patch reefs a little a little later on but yeah it's a nice day calm waters got some squid on me see if i can get some a little bit of live bait see what's up how's it going guys nice day chum block out i don't know if you see all the valley who's there but active picked up a few speedos three tails some ballies some speedos a little bonita trigger nice macro here man nice chunky cereal macro here well, got enough bait to sit out here at night and do some bottom fishing you know keep packing away at these snappers to see what we got See what the bottom gives us. Beautiful day. How's it going, guys? This trip went real good. You know, um, in the beginning, my plan was just to troll. I was trolling some plastics, you know, some just deep diving lures, a planer, a couple of uh, lipless lures, you know, that kind of sink, you know, kind of like a suspending, kind of like a router trap kind of thing. A lot of weeds, you know, it was tough to pull it. Um, uh, a lot of dolphins out. Green water wasn't really the best conditions to do the blue water trolling. 
but I got out there. It was a nice day, you know, the current was pushing south, so I came out of the south. Uh, uh, where I go, there's kind of like a, I can go through Boca Chita, which is more north, or I can go through Ocean Reef, which is more south. And depending on which way the current's pushing, I kind of see it, you know. Um, I like to go out of the south and troll north. Last time I was going to do that, um, the, the current was pushing really hard to the north. So I'm like, man, if I go down there, if I go down south, I'm gonna just I'm gonna I'm gonna end up in super up north in Miami real quick. So this time is a little different. The current was pushing south, and I went to the south to to swim to to troll against the current. So that's what I did. And there's a lot of weeds out there, man. You know what I mean? It, it, I, there was a lot of frigate birds out. I should have been ready with some rig belly hoop, but I wasn't. But it was definitely a nice day, a nice day to just get out there and drive around and troll around. Didn't find anything on the troll. A lot of weeds, but um, I heard that there was a lot of uh, really good mutton snapper bite and that the drift was going really good so so then i just came into a mooring ball you know i came into a mooring ball there in uh, 50 feet i didn't want to waste my chump block because i was trying to save it for the patch reefs later but um you know i got a couple of yellowtails off the bottom pr pretty quick there you know i was trying to get some runners or some some grunts or something to drift out there deep or 150 you know but um but i saw those yellowtails and, and i wasn't really picking up the bait fish you know really so i was going to use a legal tail for you know to drift it but i wasn't really picking up a lot of bait fish so you know i was hey you know it's looking like there's yellowtails here. So I dropped a chum block and, you know, I kind of I kind of sat on that spot. You know, it was quiet. Most of the day it was quiet. But um, I just, I just you know, I, I had those three tails on me. At some point I got a trigger fish off the bottom. So I was putting some type of meat in the boat. And I'm like, hey, man, if I sit here with the chum out uh, until sunset, you know, it might go off. Right. So then um, I was there and, and, you know, it was slow. I was hanging out. Real nice day. I was chilling, catching a super good vibe bringing in a lot of bait uh the the, the ballyhoo and the speedos were eating right off the back of the, the the chum bag so i was able to bring a lot of those in you know and and it puts some you know put a belly on the bottom and you know i had, I had some I had some baits out there were uh, a lot of the stuff was getting hung up on the bottom there wasn't a lot of current so that was also you know not helping the whole thing out either but um you know i was able to sit on there and pick up some bait and i gotta tell you guys you know i'm glad i stuck with it because at six o'clock, you know, four o'clock, five o'clock, six o'clock, where the sun was getting real down. And it's funny because the chum block was like, it was still flowing, but it was, everything wasn't in there. It was kind of, you know, more of the remnants in there. But just because I had already created that little ecosystem because there was already all that bait and all the, all the, uh, any fish under the boat must have been comfortable at that point. Since I was the only boat around, I was the only line in the water. That sun was going down. The chum was ready, you know, ha had everybody comfortable. I gotta tell you guys, man, it started going off. And, and, and it gets to that point where it's like, oh, well, I have a yellowtail rod in one hand and that's just going off. I got a bottom rod in the other hand and that's just going off. And, you know, um, and, and you know, I, I had to make the choice and I did the yellowtail thing. And and from the last couple of weeks, I've seen that, you know, the macros have been around now a little bit less because of the temperature. But the macros have been around and, and they, they hit, you know, on the sunset on that yellowtail. You know, if you have the right size hook, I was, I was pretty much just freelanding like a 3.0, like a 3.0 little J hook, you know, little live bait hook on 20 pound mono or 15 mono that probably got broken off and then I just put it back to my 20 mono. And towards the night, you know, it's a little more forgiving, especially if, you know, uh, a different fish, squirrel fish or mutton snapper, stuff like that, you know, they can bite at night and, and on, on the free line like that. You know, I kind of realized that you gotta be a little bit more patient on the free line when you're just paying line out, paying line out. You know, it's not gonna happen in 30 seconds. You know, you gotta really, really just be super patient with it. And it was paying off, man. At some point it was just like every single bait I'll put in the water, I was using Speedo. For the yellowtail thing, I was using like little be little bits of speedo, fresh speedo that I had just picked up there from from the, from the from the slick, you know, and that that's that's what it was, man. And and I'll tell you what, that ballyhoo though, that ballyhoo I picked up, um, recycling bait's really important because I, when I was trolling, I passed through a lot of different uh, groups of frigate birds and stuff like that, and I didn't have my rig ballyhoo ready, so that could have probably cost me a couple mahi right there. But but you know that's what it is, man. Recycling bait, and I did get into a nice fat cereal macro there right at sunset. You know, just ripping line. You know, it was, I'm really glad I caught it, and and you know I've been after the I've been wanting to a, a nice macro for a while. I got a kingfish the last couple of trips, but yeah, man, the kudas have been mad. Uh, the bad the shark where there was there was a couple of sharks there. You know, I, I can't lie. Um, I brought up a couple of sharks, but yeah, man, I had the trigger. I had the macro on me. I had three small yellow toes from the bottom, but then the yellow toe bite just went off when the sun went down you know every single piece of speedo that i'll free line would just run off my run off my spool and and it was good man it was nice i was able to sit there i was able to get my limit you know real patient you know looking at the moon looking at the stars orion's belt little dipper just out there just reading the stars and just you know by myself you know solo trip the first time i do a solo trip and really come back with some good meat 
and it was just it was a nice trip you know it, it wasn't the best fishing conditions i didn't have a lot of moon uh um you know none of that i really missed my miner in the morning with the with the troll but it, it that, i just waited for that sunset you know and it's just about you know not giving up guys not giving up thanks for watching and you know see you next time let's do it cast some fish